Hello, I'm Catherine Crouch, BBC Gardener of the Decade, and here we are at the beautiful Somerset Gardens of East Lambrook Manor, and I'm going to be showing you how to plant a tub of beautiful flowers that will keep going all the way through the summer in a really lovely hot theme of reds and purples. Now I've bought this really lovely terracotta pot from the garden centre, a lovely glaze of browns and reds to complement our theme. You can see it's got a good hole in the bottom which we need for drainage. Now a good pot is a good investment. This was £20 on special offer. First of all we need to make sure that we can drain all the water through when we're watering. So I'm going to use pieces of broken pots. Any gardener will end up with a collection of these whether they like it or not. So put one, a good sized piece, upside down on the hole and then I'm going to add some more pieces so I've got a good air space at the bottom so when we're watering all the water will drain through nicely. If you haven't got any crock pieces then one stone across the hole and a layer of gravel in the bottom of the pot will be fine. So here we are without sliding them to one side. Can you see the crocks in the bottom there? Now I've got a really lovely selection of plants and it's not rocket science to plant a tub. You just shove in some compost and shove in some plants. Easy peasy. But today I'm going to show you some tips that will really make your pots that extra bit special. Now, I went to a plant demonstration and I heard this wonderful American woman say, Honey, when you're doing a mixed tub, what you want is a thriller, a filler and a spiller. Makes perfect sense. Now, our thriller is the main event in the pot that gives us some height. And this is a beautiful cordyline Torbay Red, which you can see is a really good colour to go with our pot. Then I'm going to have as our filler, which is our centre main colour event, three beautiful osteospermen. Two of them in a lovely flame red and just for fun, a really rich velvety purple. Now, first of all, I need to fill up the tub halfway with compost. And the aim of the game is to end up with the tops of the root balls about an inch and a bit below the top of the rim. So as when we water, we can just fill up all that top space with water, let it drain down through. We don't want them too deep. We don't want them sticking out either. So let's start off and bang some soil in. Use a nice big scoop, pop it in over the top of our crocs. There we are, that's about right to start with. Now you can see that our main thriller plant appears to be taking up nearly all of the pot already. So we're going to have to do some clever cutting in order to make sure we've got room for all the other things. Now, if we put the osteospermums in with this corder line, can you see how it's going straight over the top of the osteospermum? So what I want to do is give this a bit of a trim. So using just an ordinary pair of scissors, I can just quietly cut off right next to the stem, the very lowest of the shoots. We won't see these when the pot's completed, Let's take the label off. Now the great thing about using these is these plants, if we're giving a mild winter, maybe a little protection, the cordylines are hardy and you'd be able to use this plant year after year. There we are. That should do it. So we've got some cuts there. They won't show a little bit more oblique. So knock it out of its pot. There we are, lovely root ball tease out some of these long roots just so as it encourages the plant to send out new growth into the compost instead of going round and round in circles. So we're going to pop this in the pot like so. Now we're really going to have to plant these fairly tight so I'm going to just tease off the root ball either side to make this slightly a flattened oval instead of a round shape. The plant won't mind if we break a root it can grow another one. Take all these old tats around and I'm going to put this 
as hard to the back of the pot as I can. Now then for our osteospermum. These were bought a couple of days ago and already one or two of the first flowers have gone over. So just for the look of the thing, I'm going to deadhead it and cut it off. Now when you deadhead something, cut down to something definite like a joint. Don't just cut the flower head off, otherwise you'll end up with a sort of forest of ugly spikes. But can you see how these lovely buds are going to give us a continuous succession of flowers all the way through the summer? Absolutely yummy. Now, there's a very well-grown root ball, almost too well-grown. We can lose some of this. There you go. Now, this was planted just a little bit in a smaller pot, so I'm going to bring up the level of the compost. So we end up with all the tops of our plants at the same level. Let's put our lovely purple osteospermum in the middle. Uh, we've lost one flower in action in the middle. There we go, that's okay. Same again, tease out all these roots. Just give them a good scuffing. I'll put this back, really push it down. So we're nearly full, but you'd be surprised. There's still room for more plants. The more we can stuff in, the more spectacular the day's going, the display is going to be. There's a bit of a tap. Don't worry if you lose the odd leaf; it'll be fine. So to contrast with our rich brooding hot colours. I'm going to put some lovely lime green helichrysum and these are our spillers. They will spill over the front of the container and these can grow two or three feet in a season. I've got plenty of compost underneath. They'll go like nobody's business. This is a helichrysum gold. You can also get these plants in variegated and silver forms for other colour schemes. It's one of my favourites for a big pot. Let's sling over the top. Now what else have we got? We can still pack in a few plants. This is a Lysimachia, Midnight Sun, so the lovely dark bronze is matching the dark colours of the pot and the cordyline. We'll see if we've got space for that. This will have beautiful yellow flowers in later summer once the plant is established. Lovely contrast there of the dark foliage and the light. I love that, really yummy. I've also got, I don't know if we'll get away with this, this is a little climber. Climbs to two or three feet, four if it's really well fed. And this is Thunbergia orange beauty, otherwise known as black-eyed Susan. And if I find a little space for it, I wonder if she's going to climb her way up through the cordyline in the summer. It's always worth a try. Let's see what we can do. A little stake. Let's lose the label. I wonder if I've got a space back here. Yeah, I've got, if I rummage down through, I've got a space behind one of the osteospermums. So I'm just going to pop that in there and take the top off that. Let's hope we won't have our eye out. Trail that up through. Now, it doesn't look like anything at all at the moment, but I'm hoping that will come. How are we doing? I think I might take one or two more of these leaves of the cordyline off because we're still not seeing the osteospermums to best effect. So let's do a little bit more of a trim. It won't mind. These plants grow like toothpaste coming out of a tube. It will produce more shoots out of the top of the plant, but I think it will look better if it's coming up as a bit of a fountain rather than spreading out completely. Let's take some off this side as well. Try not to cut all the flower heads off to my osteospermums. There we go. We've still got a nice bit of vertical effect, but now we can see the osteospermums a lot better. Now, we just need to pack in 
more compost in around the gaps between the plants. And using a dibber is a really good idea to make sure that we haven't got any gaps. You can see how wobbly our cordial line is, so that needs a good packing around to keep it stable. Shove in more compost. Again, this will take a little while, so don't rush it. Feel down with your hands to see we haven't left any yawning gaps. Now, even when you push as much compost in between the plants, you might find that after you've watered it all in, watering is not just to moisten an already moist pot, but it's to settle the compost firmly around the roots of the plants. And you might find if you've got a bit of a hole, then the compost sinks down. So water it and then have another look to see if you need to add any more compost. There we are. Don't worry about getting compost all over the leaves because that will wash off when we water. There we go. That's pretty good. Now, looks like we're complete, but there's still something we can do to give this some extra va va -voom. Here's a pack of nasturtiums. Now, this is a climbing variety from Sutton Seeds called Tropical Mix. Now, climbers don't have to climb. In nature, they often sprawl. So what I want to do is to just take some of these seeds, and these are nice and easy to sow. They're really quite big seeds. Very happy to grow in competition. And I'm just going to poke a few of them just down to my finger joint in and around the edge of the pot. And I'm hoping that these will germinate where they can see the light and spill out over the pot with lovely orange and yellow and scarlet flowers. And they could trail up to three feet away, so it's going to look quite spectacular. Let's give it a go, in you go. Now, nasturtium seeds aren't too expensive to buy. And the great thing about growing things from seed, if you don't tell anyone and they don't grow, nobody's any the wiser. So your reputation as a successful gardener will remain intact. Now, we're still not done. Still a few holes here. And to ensure that this display will keep going right the way through the summer, we need to add some extra feed. Now, when it came to compost years ago, I was far too poor and mean to buy decent compost. I have found that if you use a specialist tub and container compost, success will be assured because you're paying for extra fertilizer and water retaining granules, which if your pot should dry out completely, it will absorb water much more readily. There we are. Now don't worry if your container at this stage looks a little bit tatty because all our plants are facing in funny directions. That will improve once it grows on a little bit. So. To ensure that this keeps going all the way through the year, we want to give it some extra feed. A couple of ways you can do it. You can either water with a liquid fertiliser every time you water the plant, or every week or so. I always end up forgetting. So what I use now are these Osmocote um, slow-release fertiliser capsules. Once you've got these in, this should feed the whole pot for six months when all you have to do is water. And by the end of the season, your pot will be twice as big as your neighbours. For a pot this size, I would probably use six or seven. And just push them down into any gaps with your finger or thumb until uh, sort of the length of half your finger down into the compost. And every time you water, these capsules will release a small amount of fertiliser and the plants will take it up and grow beautifully, healthily, all summer long. So, it only remains for me to find the odd extra gap. If you don't want to use chemical fertiliser and would prefer an organic solution, one thing you can use is pelleted chicken manure. This is quite nice to handle. Just don't chew your fingernails afterwards. Wash your hands. 
and sprinkle a little bit of this around here but I will probably be putting a handful of this on this pot in amongst the plants once a month right the way through the summer to make sure the nutrients carry on through. So all we have to do now is clear up a little bit, your little tweak and give it a water and there we have one hot tub for summer. I've planted this with my thriller to the back of the pot, my fillers in the middle and my spillers at the front. So I can view it from one side. This would be great for planting, um, putting it on my front doorstep, for example. If you want to plant this so as you can view it from all the way around, put your thriller in the middle and your fillers in a triangle around and then your spillers all the way around the pot. For more gardening and videos and lovely projects to do, do visit silverlinetools.com. <laughs>